This is Professor Michael Chapman. I'm one of the most experienced IVF doctors in Australia. I believe that an important part that I can contribute is to educate patients in relation to fertility, infertility and all that that involves. These series of podcasts help to educate you. I hope they are helpful to you. If you wish to know more, however, I'm more than happy to have you contact me via email, which is profmchapman at gmail.com or make an appointment to see me on 91384222 How much activity do you recommend or not recommend after an embryo transfer and can you choose gender with IVF Two separate questions Now the scientific evidence suggests that being normal in terms of activity after an embryo transfer is fine you get out of the you, you People have looked at lying in bed for you know, 24, up to 24 hours after an embryo transfer. It makes absolutely no difference to pregnancy rates. Even there's some evidence, for instance, that even having intercourse that night may improve the chances of implantation. It certainly works in mice, apparently. So don't restrict um, that side of life. I generally say don't do any heavy heavy lifting. I actually laugh and say no horse riding or jet boat skiing where you're going to jolt things. But even that probably doesn't make a difference because lots of people have got pregnant <laughs> being highly active, not necessarily through IVF, but generally. So, I yeah, the evidence is that exercise makes no difference. I probably, that if you do marathon running as a standard thing, then I'd probably cut down to half marathons. Just because of the over over exercise gives you heat, it makes all everything very hot. <laughs> but yeah, be sensible. And the second question was gender selection with IVF. Okay, y- yes, the technology is there, but no, in Australia we're not allowed to reveal the sex of an embryo because of the concerns about potentially gender bias is what people worry about too. In countries around the world where males are important to society, then potentially gender selection beforehand will change that. However, most of the patients that come to me asking that question are patients that have had two or three of the same sex and want the third, second or third child to to be the opposite sex. So that's not really going to create a bias. There are places around the world that, that you can, that is not illegal to do that. In, in reach of Sydney is probably Hawaii, California, Thailand. So it's been banned in India and in China and in Hong Kong and Taiwan. But, yeah, so uh, most places it's banned. And certainly in Australia, there's no chance. And don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu.